today we're going to tackle the synthesis of the two researchers. First is we're going to synthesize the effects of captioning videos used for foreign language listening activities by Paula Wimke of Michigan State University. This will be presented by me, Magiana Hermogenes, Melvick Hapus, and Laraya Mario. Is the study question relevant? Yes, the study question is relevant because in the evaluating the question, we found out that the question is clear, that the paper stated what investigation they're going to utilize, and that is to investigate the effects there of captioning during video-based listening activities. The question, or the study question, is also relevant in the sense that it has evidences and supports from previous researchers and has a practical use to the people who will be reading this because it will be concerned with how captions or non-captions build meaning and understanding while listening to a video. And does the study add anything new? Yes, the study gives additional information, especially to the reader, like me, because I reflect in putting captions in a video that will help me build meaning or non-captions. Are I think non-captions are more effective than putting captions. What type of research question is being asked? The type of research question that is being asked is observational or relational style questions because they are designed to look at the relationship between putting captions to build vocabulary or removing captions. Was the study design appropriate for the research question? Yes, I think the design used here is also mixed method, both qualitative study and quantitative study. It is qualitative study because the method utilized is an interview and observation. Yes, it is appropriate because in order to know if captioning during the first showing of the videos was more effective for performance on oral vocabulary test than captioning on the second one. It's also a quantitative study because it represents the number of participants in their mean scores on the vocabulary and comprehensive test, group by language, proficiency level, and captions order. Did the study method address the most important potential sources of bias? Yes, the study addressed the most important potential bias because, as you can see, the study indicated how many of the respondents are stated and what nationality are they going to have. But there are, seems to be a bias here because there are only a few nationalities who were selected to be respondents, maybe because of the flaws. For example, there are limited time to go around the world and ask every nationalities and somehow compare the results of every culture. But the overall study was clear and more on practical usage. Was the study performed according to the original protocol? Yes, because the method is appropriately based on the method used and the analysis are well explained and stated in the study. Does the study test a stated hypothesis? Yes. Based on the prior research, the first hypothesis is that captioning will result in comprehension and vocabulary gains. Thus, in relation to the last three research questions, we assume null hypothesis here, that is, there is no ordering effect of captions, no differential effects from captioning order in relation to the language being learned, and that proficiency will not affect the benefits of any ordering effect of captions. Were the statistical analysis performed correctly? Yes. When I am reading this, the statistical analysis are appropriate to the method used. These are performed correctly in a sense that the hypothesis is appropriately connected to the method used and the analysis of the statistical treatments are of relevance with the conclusion stated in the study. Do the data justify the conclusions? Yes. The interview data revealed that learners use captions to increase their attention, improve processing, and reinforce previous knowledge, and also analyze language. 
Learners also reported using captions as a crutch. Are there any conflicts of interest? Yes. It is difficult to generalize the findings of the studies reviewed. First, several studies did not group subjects by proficiency levels. Thus, differences in comprehension may have been more related to proficiency than to effective use of captions. Second, the type of tests used to measure the effects of language, learners' processing of caption vary widely. Notably, absent were studies on the captioning and the acquisition of Arabic, Chinese, and Russian. This is important because we do not know if the conclusion from the studies above are generalizable to the learning of languages with orthographies that differ from those of the native language of the participants. We know from research by Pujala of 2002 that captions, even though beneficial, can be overused. Some researchers suggested that to avoid overuse of captions, videos can be played once with captions and once without. The second research would be university students with public speaking anxiety, educational accommodation or therapeutic intervention and change by Phyllis Parr, University of Western Sydney. I have to agree that speaking anxiety is really hard to control, especially when a person has a low self-esteem. According to researchers, aside from death and phobias, Speaking anxiety is one of the fearful anxiety a person experiences. As stated by Kozaka and Leite in 1998, social phobia or public speaking anxiety is one of the most frequently observed fears among college and university students, with prevalence rates estimated to be between 15 to 20 percent. In addition, a significant amount of research has been conducted supporting the efficacy of cognitive behavioral therapy or CBT in the treatment of social anxiety disorder in the university students with social anxiety disorder. They cited that students who experience fear, especially when speaking in groups, delivering tutorial presentations, and in the general management of social situations. Five students who met diagnostic criteria for social anxiety disorder participated in a six week cognitive behavioral group treatment program at the University of Western Sydney. Is the study question relevant? Yes, the study question is relevant because it talks about the common situation happening in most of the people when talking to a larger audience. That is called speaking anxiety. It is clear because the question in the study is answerable and can be addressed by the methodo methodology used. It focuses on the empirical study because it requires generation to, of data to answer questions which leads to determine methods of inquiry and data collection. Does the study add anything new? Yes, the study contributed to another knowledge because I found out that this paper evaluates the effectiveness of a cognitive behavioral group treatment program in university students of or with public speaking anxiety. They claim that the treatment program will help reduce student anxiety rates and students will be able to generalize the skills that they have learned to other areas of their lives, including personal relationships, work, and social environments. What type of research question is being asked? It is a solution-focused type of research question because it describes better ways to solve the research questions or situations. The study asks the questions on how to effectively overcome speech anxiety through the treatment program. Was the study design appropriate for the research question? Yes, the design being used in the study is a mixed method of qualitative study and quantitative study. Qualitative study because the researchers here are going to evaluate and interpret the results of gathered data from the respondents through describing the treatment program of students with public speaking anxiety. It is also qualitative study because the scores of the respondents will be measured in order to show clinically reduced levels of anxiety at both post-test and at six-week follow-up. Did the study method address the most important potential sources of bias? Yes, study methods address 
the most important potential sources of bias because as you can see, programs have involved alternate methods of assessment, individual examination arrangement, and modification to the built environment. It means that the study has appropriate method used just like the respondents and the instruments utilized in this study. And this study are not biased to the results. One of the most common methods of presentations or assessment utilized within the university setting is the use of tutorial presentations. The psychological instruments utilized in this study have good risk reported. Reliability and validity are used extensively in social anxiety research. The following two instruments were used. First, the personal report of public speaking anxiety. Second, the social phobia and anxiety. The interviews were audio taped and they transcribed by the interviewer. At six week follow up, Participants were requested to complete the two quantitative measures. Was the study performed according to the original protocol? Yes. The study is performed according to original protocol because it is stated that rather than accommodating a student's fear of public speaking or rather allowing the students to avoid the anxiety provoking situation, it would be more appropriate to adopt and apply CBT principles and techniques and provide a group treatment program within the university setting. And this is based on the research question of the study with the greater re relevance of the method used. Does the study test a stated hypothesis? Yes. In fact, there are four stated hypotheses in the study. First, scores of the quantitative measures will show clinically reduced levels of anxiety at both post-test and at six-week follow-up. Second, participants will report a reduction in experience anxiety levels and symptoms. Third, participants will report experiencing a range of changes both of an interpersonal and intrapersonal nature. And the last one, participants will report experiencing a generalization of the skills developed within the group program across a range of settings. Were the statistical analysis performed correctly? Yes, the type of change described by the participants were far-reaching and covered reductions in anxiety levels as well as inter interpersonal and interpersonal changes. All participants indicated that they had experienced a drop in their anxiety levels by at least 50%. This finding supports the second hypothesis that participants will report a reduction in experienced anxiety levels and symptoms. Again, the findings concerning the reported intrapersonal and interpersonal changes support the third hypothesis that participants will report experiencing a range of positive changes both an interpersonal and intrapersonal nature. Do the data justify the conclusions? Yes. It is also anticipated that participants will improve their communication skills base, increase their confidence, and the therapeutic process will contribute to improvements in their overall quality of life. Are there any conflicts of interest? Yes, there are. English was not the first language of participant D, and there were times during the treatment program and in the completion of psychometric tests that are, the participants struggled with the language. For example, when completing the PR, PSA, and post tests, participant D asked what was meant by the term perspire. It is the qualitative test result. It is therefore possible that the difficulties with the English language may have impacted on the qualitative test results. Hence, for participant D, there was an inconsistency between the qualitative and quantitative findings that may be best explained by language difficulties. No participant indicated that they had experienced the assertiveness component of the program as the most effective. However, assertiveness was continually referred to during the interviews. Perceived limitations in this study primarily concerned the size of the group and the length of the program. It would have been preferable for the group to be larger in order to further challenge the participants 
during grade exposure. In addition, the group program was of a re relatively short duration of only six weeks, and additional exposure is likely to have further reduced anxiety levels. It would also have been useful to have asked students during the narrative interviews if they had normally disclosed their anxiety disorder to the university. Finally, it would have been preferable to have, to have had another and later follow-up at six months in order to obtain a more accurate picture of how well treatment outcomes were maintained. Thank you for watching. We hope that you've learned something from the presentation.